That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a we need to do a Twitter deep dive into Notre Dame's over under win total for 2024. There's a lot of varying opinions on what Notre Dame's ultimate record is going to be. It's really interesting. Let's dig into it. Edition of the Always Irish Show. As always, thanks for being here. You can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That'll see Yanni Boy out as well. Notifications on that way. You will learn it every time a new video drops. I know you don't want to miss it. Twitter. Search bar, always Irish, rat, always Irish, Inc. Emails, always Irish, handy at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want it. If you don't want to see my face, nobody can blame you for that. Call in lines. They're popping, baby. 312-988-15. Dial it up. Tell Cousin Johnny all you've heard and seen. USA Today, Irish, where I read all about it. And patreon.com, a slash, always Irish, to former captain. Mike Goolsby, leading tackler, by the way. Me and him breaking it all down. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you to all you that are there. Picked up some subscribers lately. Thank you very much. Not bad for the summer. All right. Here's the deal. Um, who knows what this year's going to bring for Notre Dame? Who knows? I mean, I'm already racking my brain sideways. Every single day, every call-in show we do, every morning show, every Saturday night show, Every time I'm on Twitter, every time I open my phone and look at text messages, it's, it's, I feel the Irish anxiety entering 2024. And I believe the reason is because things are getting real. You're through that year one understanding of Marcus Freeman getting his feet wet, whatever. And then year two, we're rebuilding the roster and the staff's moving around a little bit and now you're in that magical year three, which has been a, a, a key year for past Notre Dame coaches that's kind of kind of lets you know ultimately who's going to be successful at Notre Dame at high level or not. The year three correlation of that's very interesting. Historically, you have the new playoff format you want to be a part of and host a playoff game. All this stuff, all this stuff is rattling, rattling around in everybody's Irish minds. And then we get into like setting the over-under total win totals for these college football teams. Here's me. When I look at Notre Dame's relative talent and I look at their schedule and what I think of it, if I were a lines maker, and I'll be honest, I'm not a, I don't gamble on football, whatever. I'm too close to it, too emotional to be gambling on that. Like, I've done a lot of golf stuff in the past because I don't have an emotional tie to it like Notre Dame. I'm not putting myself in that situation. Tap to wade through logic, but also have for Notre Dame and against other people. What I want to happen versus what I think is going to happen. That's a dangerous betting environment for somebody like me who has such intense emotions with college football for us. And let's be honest against literally everyone else. I could find an axe to grind with like everybody. So I'm not a big better. I don't understand the ins and outs of setting these lines and what they're trying to do. Are they trying to bait you into taking the other one to balance out the money? I don't understand all that. 10 and a half would be where I'd put this. Looking at our talent, what I think we have and all that, and looking at who we play, whatever. I think 10 and a half is, is kind of a where I would put this. Here's what's interesting about 10 and a half, though. If Notre Dame loses to Texas A&M, yikes. Yikes. Like, that's the most difficult thing about all this. And all of us that want Notre Dame to host to play host a playoff game at our place and all that, like, and you want eleven and one or better, whatever. It, it's hard to go eleven and one if the one is the first week and it's the calendar still says freaking August. Eleven and one's really hard to do if you have a loss in August. There's no way for me to minimize 
the importance practically and perceptually of the Texas A&M game. There's no way to minimize it. There's no way to minimize it. And it's year three. They're real expectations. And you need to go in there and win. Oh, it's going to be hot and they're going to be drunk and they got male cheerleaders and white overalls. I know all that. You got to win anyways. You got to win anyways. Oh, they pump fake crowd noise in through the jumbo. Uh, You got to win anyways. No more excuses. You got to win anyways, okay? And to be perfect, you got to be damn good enough. I'm not expecting a finished, polished product against A&M. You just got to be good enough to win by one point. Okay? Ten and a half is where I'm putting that line. Let's look at this now. Let's see what Twitter says. I say, if I were asked where to set Endy's over-under win total, I'd set it at 10 and a half. What are your thoughts? Adam was just joking when he said it's eight and a half. I know he was just joking. Dos Leprechauns, how are you doing, man? I haven't talked to you in a while. Hope you're okay. Move from California to Arizona, I believe. Hope you're doing okay, man. I'm going to have to go over. Texas A&M, Florida State, USC, and Louisville will be the season-defining games. I think we take all uh, all but one of those. Just not sure which one we come up short. I don't like opening in College Station with a, a new quarterback. Joseph Dodson, nine. Zach says, I'd hit the over if it was 11.5. Okay, so he's got Notre Dame going 12 and 0 which is statistically rare for any team, Notre Dame or anybody else. Irish fan 76, 10 and a half seems fair. I hear many fans saying making the playoffs is considered a good season. Frankly, that seems like low expectations. I think if it's not the final four of the playoffs, it's a disappointment. Interesting there. Definitely the right Corey, definitely the right over under. If they win the opener, the over feels like a lock. There are a lot of people who feel similarly. It seems to be a thing where a lot of people are thinking if Notre Dame beats A&M, 12-0 and 0 is literally like what's going to happen and we're like trending there. And if we lose against A&M, they figure we're going to lose one or two other games if we can't handle that one. But I struggle with that because is there no scenario where you lose game one at a and with new offensive line and a new quarterback who did, was out all spring and you know, everything, and then you get better and better throughout the year and you end up 11-1 and that's the one? Like, people seem to be having it on these extremes. If you beat A&M, we're going 12-0, and and if you lose to them, we're going 10-2 and or 9-3. and there is a middle ground road where you can play bad week one and then get better throughout the year and then and then you're fine. But a lot of people have a hard time seeing it that way. It's like all on the good or all on the bad. You follow me? Kevin says, over. Kevin, how are you, man? I haven't seen you in a while too. I believe you're uh I believe you're about to have a son. Congratulations, man. Over 11 wins minimum. Anything less given the schedule is a bitter disappointment. Mason Plummer, good dude, does a lot of note. He's got a lot of Notre Dame recruiting insight. Uh, good friend, good dude. Good job covering Notre Dame by him too. That's where Vegas has it. Ten and a half, exactly right. If it were nine and a half, I'd hammer the over. So would I. So would I, for sure. That's why I think ten and a half's right about where it is. Benny says, I see ten and two is the absolute floor, so that's perfect. Craig says the number of wins is irrelevant as long as it's enough to make the playoff. I kind of agree and I kind of don't because there's a big difference between an 11 and one Notre Dame team making the playoff. 11 and one Notre Dame making the playoff means you're hosting that home game in late December in South Bend the week before Christmas in cold weather. If you go 10 and two, I'm not sure you're a lock to make the playoff. And even if you do it 10 and 2, you're going to play somewhere else against a good team at their place. Those are vastly different playoff paths between 
hosting a group of five team at your place in cold weather the week before Christmas versus going on the road to a top seven or eight team or whatever at their place. Big difference. Technical technician asked Kent. He's the resident uh, Ohio State troll in my morning show. He would pick Notre Dame to go eight and four or something. If it it's under yours or Vegas, Marcus got some explaining to do. Nice. You know what? I appreciate this with uh, the old Lucy. I love Lucy there, man. There's a good throwback. Adam Dowling again with the uh, tenant showing a 10 and a half here as a, a popular number. T.I. says unsatisfactory. Uh, Jay Lehman, let me answer that after game one again. That that game one is just a lightning bolt. It's just, it's just the total energy vibe barometer of this fan base the whole season. It's going to be dictated by week one. If you lose week one, no one's going to care if you beat Northern Illinois 100 to zero the next week. Purdue 50 to nothing. Ohio 87 to nothing. It doesn't matter. We need to start winning the needle moving games to prove this is trending in the right direction. Anthony, I think the opener sets tone for this season. I would not rule out 12 and 0 uh, while <laughs> schedule, while not Michigan's high school schedule, it's still decent. 11 to 1 is my call. Vincent Sebastiano, that's fun last name to say. Over 15, come on, we don't assume losses. We demand championships, go Irish. Vincent, I like your loyalty to the Irish, but I would argue, man, you can't just every year go, Notre Dame's going to go undefeated every year. Why do you think that? Because I want Notre Dame to go undefeated every year. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Like, like, or maybe it does if you're a fan. But if you're doing what I'm doing and writing these articles and predicting games in USA Today on the website and all that, you can't just say, I'm picking every game because I want them to win every game. They're, like, that's just, I can't do it. Paul in Indy, 11-1. Sports talk, talk Drew, over under, 15.9. Uh, Jay Vitt, 11.5. Man. Here you go. Marxist Freeman, God help us all. Seven or what is wrong with you? Seven or eight wins. The schedule's about as hard as Michigan's last year with zero great matchups. Freeman's a complete clown and can't learn on the job. This is not like Harbaugh, who was given the time to rebuild. Big difference. Freeman failed. Whatever. Big difference. John Arbaugh is an outstanding coach. I think you mean Jim. So even in your troll effort here, you messed it up. Gosh, get a grip. Hammer the over. Feeling like 88. Play maybe two real games. The funny thing is, that's coming from a Michigan fan. You are by default not allowed to question anybody else about the quality of their schedule after the high school slate you sliced through last year. Get a grip of your life, bro. JH, all comes down to interior O-line play again. Get them some help with quickness. Yeah, it's that O-line is going to be a big indicator. And week one, you have no margin for error. Texas a m got dudes flying off the edge, baby. 12 regular season, Robert says. Man, we got a bunch of people leaning on the 12 and 0. That's ballsy. Take three. Sport. And again, oh, John, where's the loss if you're going to pick 11 and 1? I don't have to pick a loss. I'm looking at the statistics that say it's really a minuscule odd percentage. Any team's going to run the table at 12 and 0. I don't need to pick the team. It's just the percentages mathematically. Say that 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 it's it doesn't happen a lot. Given our schedule and the expansion of the playoffs, it's playoff or bust. That's not what I asked, though. Right? Like some people are changing the assignment. That's not what I asked. Playoff or bust? I asked that win total. Rally, sons of ND. I'd be disappointed if it's anything less. I would concur on the 10.5 inside the pylon. 
I feel like this schedule sets up nicely for 11 and one. This should be a playoff team. Yes, it should. Terrence Westbrook, 11 and a half easy. He's a regular morning show caller. Really appreciate your uh, participation every week, man. It's already been set at nine, I believe. If it was set at nine, I'm hammering the over. I don't even bet Notre Dame, and I'll be hammering that because the only way this team goes less than 10 and two is if 80 guys have ACLs that are main contributors. I just don't. I just think the combination of this schedule and, and our talent, I, a bunch of guys, key guys got to get hurt to go less than 10 and two. Dan McGuire, 12 over. I'd say 11 and one too low. Timothy, pretty solid as we have the roster and coaching to win all our games, but we haven't proven we can run the gauntlet. That's a fair point. Andrew Johnson, correct. If you set 10 and a half, I'll take the under. So that's somebody on 10 and two or less. Sean, national champions. Smooth yet psychedelic. That's a cool name. Agreed. But Leonard's health is the wild card. I see at least 11 and one if he's healthy. If not, probably another nine and 10 season. The issue with that is, the issue with that is if you end up in that situation where your starting quarterback gets hurt again, which would be two out of the three years of Marcus Freeman's tenure, not a good start, very bad luck, that's going to get really complicated because then people are going to debate, okay, we didn't reach our goals this year, you know, but should they have done it anyways, regardless who the quarterback is, or are we buying uh, some leeway for Marcus Freeman because his quarterback went down again. I would be miserable having to have that debate about, is this the real result or we need to have more leeway because starter went down. How do you account for that? That's a debate. I I'm it's annoying because nobody's going to agree. Some people are going to go, you got to, you got to win games next man up. And other people are going to go be realistic. Your starting quarterback goes down. You're kind of screwed. You got to give him leeway. And no one wants leeway in year three. They want 11 wins. I just hope we can avoid that cluster. It ain't going to be a fun conversation. Daddy O, 11. We're only playing 10 and a half games. That's not what the over under line indicates, sir. <laughs> That's not what that indicates. Or is he joking, saying we're going to win them all? I don't, I don't know. Whips. Anything less than 11 wins is an abject failure. Anything less than 12 wins is a disappointment. The schedule is a travesty, man. You know, a lot of people want Notre Dame to play Georgia and Alabama every week and Ohio State every week. And then they're the first ones complaining that we don't win every single game. Like there is a skill to scheduling in college football. That is not like a random act of, some dork in the athletic office. There is a science and a skill to setting up a college football schedule to benefit your school and their needs and how they operate. It's a skill. 12 and 0 or bus. John, you could go this hard at Kelly and accept anything less from our three with the cupcake schedule. Heck, if Brian Kelly could go 12 and 0 with Everett Golson and touchdown Tommy Freeman should be able to with this QB room. All right, geez, 12 and 0 or bust. You know, I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised how much people think this schedule is awful. Like, I really, I, I'm a little surprised by that. Um, I mean, a and is going to be a tough game. Louisville's going to be a tough game for sure. Florida State on November 9th is a big moment. You got USC in there. Could Purdue be a little tricky going up the toll road? And they're jealous because we're the football school in Indiana and not them. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I'm a little surprised. And then the other the other thing is it happens every year. Every year it happens. There's certain teams you think are going to be really good and they're not. And there's certain teams you glance over on the schedule as a cakewalk and then they end up being really tough teams to beat. Happens every year. So that's one of those where you think what you're going to think all summer 
but you don't really know what team is what till you get a month and a half into the season or whatever. I'm not even going to say a month into this season because a lot of teams have played four high school teams in that span. Right? I'd set it in nine. I think the Irish have a strong team, but they're facing some tough competition this year. Right after everybody else says the schedule is a joke, this guy says it's a tough schedule. If you had set it in nine, I'm hammering the over. Hammering 10 and two is like the worst case here. Dan McCarty and take the over. Go Irish. All right. So really interesting to me to see the variance there in how everybody's thinking this. One trend I see is a lot of people don't think a lot of this schedule at all. A lot of people don't think a lot of this schedule at all. And again, my problem is I'm eyeballing 11 and one. If you lose week one, that prediction's in on life support because you have no margin for error. And the only way to guarantee Notre Dame's in the new playoff, 11 and one, 10 and two, I am not promising anything. And even if you do, you're going into a tough road game environment. I don't like that. I don't like that. Needs to be 11 and one in order for Irish nation to have a little fun. So let me know what you guys think. Write what we're right in the comments. What you think about that t- ten and a half line? Also, this is the year hundred year anniversary. We're riding again. So if you want to get yourself a ride again shirt to wear to the games this year, I'll put the link in the description to my store. We need to ride again, baby. It, it's been long enough. We need to. We need to. The, the spirit of the four horsemen need to come out, and we need to seriously ramp it up and ride again. Link in the description. Let me know what you guys think of this number.